Get ready for a wild ride through the history of the Tommy Gun, the iconic submachine gun that went from being a mafia favorite to a wartime hero. We'll dive into the hilarious laws that once tried to keep it off the silver screen and unravel the epic story of this legendary firearms reputation. Let's roll! You've probably spotted this bad boy countless times in action-packed movies and thrilling video games. In this video, I'm here to spill the beans on why this weapon was brought to life and how it rocked the real world. Get ready to uncover how this machine gun outshone its competitors back in the day and why it became the go-to weapon for the Mafia. If you're as stoked as we are to learn all about it, don't forget to hit that like button and stick around until the end. Now, let's rewind to 1918 when the genius John Thompson crafted this iconic piece. Picture this, it was smack in the middle of World War I and the world was in turmoil. The creators had a vision to revolutionize warfare and showcase the American Army's unbridled might. Sure, automatic weapons existed, but they were colossal contraptions, basically heavyweight machine guns on wheels, resembling something out of a steampunk dream like the Gatling gun or Maxim machine gun. They were portable, but oh boy were they cumbersome. Now, here comes the Thompson submachine gun strutting onto the scene like a rock star. It offered firepower galore, neatly packaged so that a soldier could carry it with ease in their very own hands. This was the birth of a new era of weaponry and they coined it the submachine gun category. Essentially, it meant compact machine guns. The Thompson submachine gun was the trailblazer, the OG of this sizzling category. Let's sprinkle some fun facts about the Thompson submachine gun into this mix. Did you know that the creator was so darn proud of his invention that he gave it a loud and proud nickname, the Annihilator? Just picture those brave American soldiers strutting around with this incredible piece of firepower ready to annihilate anything in their path. But alas, John Thompson's dream of that Annihilator didn't quite come true. You see, the first prototypes of this bad boy appeared in 1918, and guess what? That's the very same year World War I came to a close, so this promising machine gun never made it to the army's arsenal. But here's where the plot thickens. It found its way into the hands of the police, and let me tell you, those were some challenging times. It just so happened that in the 1920s, organized crime, the good old mafia, was on the rise in America. Why, you ask? Well, it had a little something to do with the introduction of prohibition, the grand old ban on alcohol sales. You see, rules and laws existed to be broken, and in the midst of this chaos, illegal alcohol trade and production were thriving. The folks who dabbled in this bootleg booze business were raking in insane amounts of cash because people loved their drinks, and even back then, since they couldn't buy it legally, all that money was pouring into the pockets of the mafia. It was a golden era for the mobsters. And naturally, with all that mafia money flowing, territory wars and criminal showdowns began. This is where our good old Thompson submachine gun comes into play. Now, back in those days, this baby cost a whopping $200. To put it into perspective, with that kind of cash, you could buy yourself a whole car. Just to compare simpler rifles or shotguns went for about 20 or 30 bucks. In other words, only the seriously wealthy folks, which included the Mafia of the time, could afford Thompson submachine guns. They were the ones rolling in dough and naturally stocking up on the most modern weaponry. That's why those good old-fashioned gangster shootouts became synonymous with Thompson submachine guns. It was a glorious era when names like Al Capone were making headlines. The Mafia had immense power back then, so they didn't shy away from carrying out executions in public places. These loud incidents made it to the front pages of newspapers with vivid descriptions of ruthless gangsters armed with Tommy guns causing bloody mayhem. After a few of these high-profile cases, the public was genuinely terrified. The US government decided to take action, but their logic had some quirks. They pointed fingers at the Thompson submachine gun as the root of all evil. So the first thing the government did to stop those pesky gangsters was to make it ridiculously hard to buy weapons. And knowing that the Thompson submachine gun cost $200, they decided to introduce a $200 tax on weapon sales. But for the Mafia, 
These funds were mere pocket change and they didn't feel the pinch. However, it was the everyday folks who felt the difference because that $200 tax applied even to firearms that cost only $20. The only weapons exempt from the tax were basic revolvers and those were the only things regular working folks could afford for self-defense. Meanwhile, the criminals continued to swagger around with their top-notch Tommy guns. So the US government decided to take another bold step and that's when they introduced another law that made it a hassle to buy weapons. You had to gather a ton of documents, including your fingerprints. Strangely, they overlooked the fact that the Mafia couldn't care less about these laws. When getting firearms became tough, they simply raided military and police armories, taking Tommy guns for free. As a result, the Mafia's influence kept on growing and news of terrifying attacks and robberies was everywhere. In response to this, the film industry started producing a slew of Mafia movies where, of course, Every criminal had their trusty Thompson submachine gun. Thanks to the media and cinema, the gangster image became deeply ingrained in people's minds. That's when the US government realized the true problem. It was clear that rising crime rates were linked to the way bad guys were portrayed in films. In the 1930s, Hollywood introduced a strict set of rules that everyone had to follow when making movies. The most important rule was that, in the movie plot, criminals were not allowed to prevail over law enforcement. The bad guys had to be punished. Secondly, the films couldn't show drinking, smoking, gambling, nudity and of course, there was a special emphasis on not depicting the Thompson submachine gun in any way. And looking at the whole situation, you might think that the Thompson submachine gun was everywhere, even though it was banned in movies. But in reality, things were quite different. Starting in the 1920s over 20 years, only 15,000 Thompson submachine guns were sold. That's a tiny number for such a span of time, so you can see that the Thompson's influence on the country was greatly exaggerated. However, there was another crucial twist in the story and it was related to World War II. This time, the American Army did adopt the Thompson submachine gun and it was supplied to nearly all types of troops during the war. Around 1.5 million of these guns were produced during World War II, but for real combat conditions, they had to make some modifications. One important change was related to the drum magazine. In practice, it turned out to be far from ideal. It was heavy, took a long time to load, and had reliability issues. It could jam at times, so they replaced it with a more standard box magazine with a capacity of 30 rounds. They also simplified the overall design by removing the front handle and giving it a regular wooden stock. This is how the Thompson was remembered, not as the gangster's weapon, but as the primary firearm in the American Army in World War II. Soldiers were quite pleased with it because it was easy to use, reliable even in tough conditions and dangerous encounters. The Thompson consistently demonstrated its firepower using the famous American 45 ACP cartridge known for its robust and powerful bullet with impressive stopping power. And this is a robust and powerful cartridge with a heavy bullet that possesses impressive stopping power. In other words, even one shot can easily take a person out of action. Now imagine that the Thompson could fire up to 700 rounds per minute, and it becomes clear that this is some serious firepower. Perhaps its only significant drawback was its limited shooting range because their heavy bullet couldn't travel far and rapidly lost velocity. Nonetheless, the Thompson managed to participate in countless scenarios and its mere appearance on screen is closely associated with World War II. From that point on, the weapon's reputation had been redeemed. It was no longer considered the exclusive tool of gangsters. However, in the years following World War II, the Thompson didn't look as modern as it did 20 years earlier, and it needed a worthy replacement. Following the Thompson, the famous M3 Grease gun became the standard issue for the US Army. The second wave of Thompson's popularity came in the 1960s when the ridiculous rule prohibiting the display of the Tommy gun in films was finally lifted in Hollywood. After that, a second wave of Mafia movie popularity emerged, featuring the iconic Tommy gun prominently. 
Even though the Thompson is no longer in use today and has become a collector's item, we're all familiar with this weapon thanks to numerous films and a multitude of World War II video games that continue to be popular to this day. So even a century after its production, the Thompson feels like an old friend to all of us. Many of you have probably used it in games, even in a virtual world. Now, you've also learned the history of this legendary machine gun. If you found it interesting, be sure to give this video a like and let us know what other weapons you'd like to see in future videos.